Why didn't God kill David for adultery and murder? Before we can answer this question, we have to look at the story. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, during a war with the Ammonites, David was walking on his roof at night when he saw Bathsheba bathing. He fell in love with her and slept with her, even though she was married to Uriah, and soon after, she became pregnant. The only way to hide this from the public was to make people believe that Uriah made her pregnant, so he called Uriah from the battlefield and told him to go home. However, Uriah disobeyed his master's orders. His excuse was that he couldn't go home while his fellow soldiers were sleeping in tents, which was a righteous statement, so David came up with a new plan. He told Joab to send Uriah to the hottest part of the battle, only to retreat from him so he could die. This time his plan worked and Uriah died, so he married Bathsheba and started to raise their son. Obviously, what David did was outrageous. Adultery is prohibited in Exodus chapter 20 verse 14 and murder is banned in Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 17. Both David and Bathsheba should have died for what they did, in accordance with Israelite law. As it was said in Leviticus, And the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 10. However, God did something surprising. He did kill their first son, and several of his family members also died, but he let David and Bathsheba live. He didn't annul their marriage. He would even use their next son, Solomon, to continue his lineage. Why would he do all this? Why wasn't David fully punished for what he did? Well, the first reason God didn't kill David for his sins was that they formed a strong relationship. He anointed the young shepherd in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 13 through the prophet Samuel. Throughout his years in the wilderness, being chased by King Saul, David trusted in God and relied on him for protection. They became good friends, and they built a strong relationship, so God spared his life out of mercy and love. God has done this many times before. He gave Hezekiah 15 more years to live in Isaiah chapter 38 verse 5 because he was the best king since David. As it was said in 2 Kings, He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. 2 Kings chapter 18 verse 5 Hezekiah spent his life trying to bring himself and his nation to God, and his efforts paid off. Also, God showed himself to Moses in a way he hadn't shown himself to most other prophets, according to Numbers chapter 12 verses 5 to 8. They also had a special relationship, as Moses was in charge of leading the children of Israel to Canaan. They worked together to achieve God's purpose. The second reason God didn't kill David was that he repented. Yes, you can even repent for adultery and murder. Don't try your luck though. In 2 Samuel chapter 12 verse 13, after Nathan the prophet's parable made him realize what a terrible person he had been, David acknowledged his sin. Of course, there were other people in the Bible who apologized for the sins they committed. Pharaoh apologized for keeping the Israelites as slaves twice in Exodus chapter 9 verse 27 and chapter 10 verse 16, and Saul apologized for not killing all the Amalekites. As the latter said in 1 Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord, and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 24. However, they didn't change their ways after they apologized, so what they said didn't mean anything. Pharaoh chased down the Israelites after he let them go in Exodus chapter 14 verses 5 to 6, and Saul tried to kill David starting from 1 Samuel chapter 18 verses 6 to 9. They weren't truly sorry for what they did. Meanwhile, the only sin David committed after the Bathsheba affair was conducting a census, which wasn't even entirely his fault. Satan wanted to destroy God's people in 1 Chronicles chapter 21 verse 1, and he used the census as an excuse to go after the Israelites. 
Rather, throughout his life, David worked to serve the Lord and promote God's purpose, showing he regretted what he did to Uriah. Finally, the third reason God forgave David was that he felt in his professional judgment that his forgiveness would benefit both David and his own will. God has the ultimate power to forgive, so it was fully in his discretion to blot out David's sin. As it was said in Isaiah, I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake, and will not remember thy sins. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 25. This is a Bible Q&A, but spiritually speaking, we can't actually question God's decision to forgive. Plus, he knows a lot more about love than us, so we don't have enough experience to tell him how he should express that love. As it was said in 1 John, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. 1 John chapter 4 verses 7 to 8. We don't know exactly what God was thinking when he forgave David. The answers that have been given so far are just educated guesses. One thing's for sure though, God's forgiveness definitely didn't end with David. Even today, God is forgiving righteous people of all kinds of sins, and in the world to come, God will ignore all of the mistakes we made in our past lives, as long as we honestly intended on not repeating them. As it was said in Isaiah, And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. Isaiah chapter 33 verse 24 This is all possible because of Jesus Christ who was born to a descendant of David and Bathsheba, according to Matthew chapter 1 verses 1 to 17. And that is where I'm going to stop with this Bible Q&A. Why didn't God kill David for adultery and murder? He didn't kill him because they were really good friends, David fully repented for his sins, and God knew better than we do how to exercise his boundless love. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe.